Welcome to another episode of Behind the Dreamers. I'm Jennifer Loading, and we are talking to the achievers, the creators, the magic makers, and the dreamers. These are our friends. These are your friends, and they are living the extraordinary. Well, I'm so excited about my guest today. This is going to be so much fun. He says that he was born, I love this, a lifelong entrepreneur and started his business journey at a young age with a fruit stand in his mother's front yard. I have a story with that too. Over the last 30 years, he has expanded his ventures to create multiple multi-million dollar companies in both product and service industry. So you guys are going to get to hear from him in just a few minutes. But before I do that, I need to do a quick shout out to our sponsor. So today's episode is brought to you by Walt Mills Photography. If you are a creator needing post-production consultation or promotion, Walt is your guy. Whether short films, YouTube films, photography work, or a new headshot, he can help you find a solution to match your needs. To learn more about Walt and his work, you're going to want to go to photosbywalt.com. All right. It's going to be fun. So Roderick Leonard is a <laughs> right, Roderick Leonard, he's a speaker, a business coach, and the author of A Million Dollar Flip-Flops, a transformative guide to inspire individuals seeking to implement significant changes in their lives. He's traveled to 50 plus countries. And as we were just talking, he's going to more. He's been on six continents and says he brings a unique worldview and deep appreciation for freedom and autonomy to his work. So Roderick, welcome to the show. I am so excited to have you here today. Yeah, thanks for having me, Jen. This is great. This can be so fun. So real quick, before I get going, I was when I was looking at your fruit stand thing, it's a funny story because I don't know how old you are, but I feel like we're kind of probably close. But I was telling somebody one day that I was kind of an entrepreneur as a child too. So I would make crafts. But one of the big things I did is I mowed yards. Seriously, like in our neighborhood, I had friends. We would knock on doors and we would mow people's yards to make money. And then we yeah. had all these other things we were doing. So we were always hustling and trying to figure out how we were going to have some kind of cash flow in our pocket. So I think it's sometimes it's kind of just a, some of us are just kind of born doing that stuff. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. I made a, a deal with my mom to take the, they planted this huge garden. I grew up in a little town in Michigan and they planted this huge garden every year. And I said, can I go pick the vegetables and I'll put them out by the side of the road, see if anybody stops. And I couldn't have been nine, 10 years old. So I'd do that. I'd go down. There was a golf course at the end of the street. I'd get golf balls, sell them back to the golfers and just realize at a really young age, like you can just go make it on your own. I'm, I'm buying pizzas. I'm buying my own Nintendo. I'm buying a bike. It's like, I don't need to wait for anybody to give me anything. So you learn those lessons young to carry over. That's right. It's like once you start figuring out how to make money, you're like, I'm on it. I'm going, I'm going to keep moving yeah. until I figure it all out. Right. I love it. So I want to open this up a little bit because I think you're doing awesome stuff. And so I just want to talk a little bit about, tell us what you're doing. Cause we have some similar things, but I'd love to know a little bit about what you're doing to make a difference with your clients and um, helping them, I guess, you know, change directions, makes it make this transformation. Yeah. So the book comes out September 12th. It's called Million Dollar Flip Flops, Peace, Prosperity, and the Courage to Change Course in Life and Business. And I give you some really quick background. I was entrepreneur, 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 and I did this really brief stint in corporate America. And it wasn't even that bad. I was selling new homes for a Fortune 100 home builder. But I was 24. I was making more money in a month than my parents made in a year. And I could buy and do and go and anything I wanted. And I absolutely hated my life. And I had this really debilitating back pain and I was coaching baseball. I was still playing in adult sports leagues, but it was, it was literally ruining my life. And I found myself on an operating table about to get my back fused at 24 years old when I'm otherwise healthy by every other metric and whatever God universe, whatever you want to call it, I stopped the surgery and I, I said, there's gotta be another way. And that's a really long story of its own right. But I, I basically dove into all the books. I've always been a student of life, you know, and, you know, I couldn't fix myself because I was in my own body. Right. And that's the beauty of coaching and all the things you really need an outside perspective. And I got a coach, I got a therapist and I dove into all the books that I that I had loved for so many years and dug myself out of that hole, started a new business, quit the corporate job and literally never looked back. And Multiple businesses later, fast forward to, I guess, about 16 months ago now, I scaled and exited my last business. So I was semi-retired at 42. I went to, and I started with nothing, started with zero dollars, went to a million, lost it all, went back to a million. Been there, done that, right? And uh, when I was in the process of selling the business, I signed up with Brown University and got my ICF as a professional coach. 
and had envisioned that just being a, I'd always been kind of a mentor to other entrepreneurs because they see you traveling, they see you own a business, they say, how do you do it, right? Because that's not most people's path. And uh, I just thought it'd be a part-time gig. And I'm very much a, whatever door is open, I'm going to walk through it. I'm, you know, with a big enough why, anyhow is possible. I've believed that forever. I believe that now. And I said, well, what do I want to do with part two of my life? And I had a why, but I had absolutely no expectation of what that would look like. So ended up writing the book, ended up coming into contact with a bunch of amazing people. And there's so much happening now. And one of the neatest things is we're starting a foundation at the same time as we're launching Million Dollar Flip Flops. And Million Dollar Flip Flops, the flip flop in that is change, right? And if you had asked me what my superpower was for the last 20 years, why I've been successful, it's my ability to pivot and make a 180 and know that that change is going to be right and that it's on purpose. And that's what we do in the book. And I think that most entrepreneurs in particular, they're not afraid of change. They're afraid of making a mistake and what that'll cost them. So what we do in the book, it's called the waves method. And it starts with your why, deep, passionate why. Why do you get up every day? Authenticity. And that's a big piece that a lot of people miss. Why are you doing this? It's not for your spouse. It's not for your business partner. It's not for your friends. You know, people do things for other people and they don't realize. And we dive into your values. That's the V in waves, um, core values and really deep dive on that where we spend several weeks going through those. Cause again, a lot of people will have values that they think I want to hear, or they think their friends want to hear, but it's not what's really important to them. Right. And then the ease exploration, you go out into the world with these things we've just developed and thought about and you tweak them as you go, and then you build a statement of purpose. And I don't know about you, but I've had a personal mission statement for as long as I can remember. Like, who do I want to be in this world? But I'd say two to 3% of the people that come into my sphere have a personal mission statement, but all of their businesses have, pers have mission statements. Why is that? So it's a really important piece that we're just not taught to think about. So that's what we do. That's what the book's about. That's what the course is about. It's everything we do is, is giving people, I call it a decision filter. So you have a decision you need to make. You do a, a visioning exercise of what that's going to look like. And you run it through this why, values, and statement of purpose. And if it doesn't fit like a glove, it's a no. If it's a yes, you've done the work ahead of time to know that it's right and that it's on purpose. But yeah. ultimately, everything we do in the business, we donate to the foundation, send a student leader abroad. And we've got a goal to send a million kids abroad in my lifetime. And that is a, a whole other story that inspired my love for travel and all the other things. And I could go on for hours. But. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I get it. Well, and I think it's, in, you know, what's interesting is listening to your story because I, I looked over some of the stuff and I obviously didn't know everything. I didn't know about the, you know, the back, the impending back surgery, all that stuff. But I think a lot of us that have these crazy stories like this, it's like we have that defining moment, you know, where something happens and it's like, we realize you, you mentioned very early on, you know, the money you're making all, all this money and you realize you weren't really happy. And I talk about this in a lot of the work that I do and, and all of this stuff that you're talking about, I get it. I, it resonates because it's stuff I, I share as well, you know, that so many people, you know, back this up, they come out and they live these lives that they think that they need to live. Right. And they think this is a way to go. And then they realize they, they have had the success, so-called business success, but then they wake up one day and they're like, man, I'm just not really, I, is this, is this life? I'm not fulfilled. Right. And most mm -hmm. of the time it's like what you're talking about. It's not really in alignment with their values. It's not really what they want to be doing, or there's something that's not right there. And I had a young guy come on my show. He, he oh my gosh, he was really young. I think, he, I think he was born when I graduated from high school, but really amazing guy. And his was a similar story. He was making all this money and he had a great girlfriend, great life. And he was just ugh, miserable. And he, and he let it all go, you know? And so you hear this happen a lot. And so I think that there is something in that, you know, and, and when you talk about these values, it's, it's a big thing that I talk about. If you're not in the line with them, cause they figure out what they are for their work, but they don't know what they are for their personal life. Right. And so yeah. they're doing jobs, they're doing, engaging in things that don't really go with what they should or want to be doing. Yeah. Um, are you familiar with the book, the death of Ivan Illich? It's a tall story. I haven't book. read that one. I need to read that so, what it sounds like. It's a super short book and I'll spoiler alert. <laughs> at the end of the book, the main character is named Ivan and he looks up at his wife and he's on his, on his deathbed and he says, what if my whole life was wrong? I can't think of a more terrifying 
scenario than that. You know, and, and I read that, but I was probably 17 or 18 years old when I read that book. And it's, those are the kind of things that came to mind while I was laying on that table. I'm like, this is wrong. My life is wrong right now. And I've got to figure out why. Yeah. There was a guy that I interviewed last week um, by the name of Mo Salami, really neat guy. He worked for Tony Robbins. He's done, he has studied every Tony Robbins program. Same thing. He had like three degrees, was making great money. And one day he goes in his bookstore, finds this Jack Canfield book, reads it and realizes I need to be doing something different. So he orders all the books in the back of the Jack Camp, all the recommended books and reads through all of them. Anyways, he came on the show and we were talking about this whole 2% thing, like, you know, 90 something percent of pop, the population never really lives a life of fulfillment, right? Like they never get to that place. And exactly what you talk about, they get to the end and they go, when, if you ask them if they've lived this fulfilled life, they're like, no, I should have done this. I should have done that, you know? And so I kind of have this little running thing, you know, I'm always going 2%, 2%. This is where we're going 2% yeah. because this is Love the it. part, the part of the population that's actually mastering. They're mastering the success, right? The, the everything it's all, it's not just about the finance. It's everything. It's the relationships. It's all of your health, all of these pieces coming together that really leads you to that place. And like you, I always say, I don't want to be at the end of that thing going, man, I wish I'd have done that. Could have done that. No. No, that's not cool. Exactly. Exactly. You know, we're, we're just not taught to think that way. You know, it's, it's not anybody's fault. It's not their fault that they think that way, you know, but it's, it's up to people like us to raise that awareness. And, you know, I talk a lot in the book about once you go through a process like that, you can't unhear things, you can't unsee things, and you're going to see the world in a different lens. And one of the, one of the hardest things, and this might be a little off topic, but it's, the people closest to you are the ones that hold you back. And that's why having, you know, and I'm not preaching coaching. I only work with six clients at a time. I can't take anybody on if I wanted to, but I think everybody needs that outside lens because you, the people closest to you, it's not because they don't love you. It's not because they don't want what's best for you. You know, it's, they're afraid of being left behind. And when, when you have that worldview shift, there's contrast in that. And people are scared. They're scared of losing their friends. They're scared of losing their family. They're, you know, it's just, it's human nature. Yeah. You gave me chills when you were saying that because it is so true. We used to talk about it. I don't know if I shared with you that I was in Mary Kay for 22 years. So I was in leadership and I had to do a lot of that overcoming the spouse, not supporting the wife and the business mindset oh, yeah. because it happens a lot. Right. And you are so right. I've said this multiple times to people like once you start seeing things differently, you can't unlearn it. You can't unsee what you've seen and you have a different you do. You absolutely have a different lens on life or, or an outlook on life altogether. And it, whereas, you know, I, I tell people, you know, because I've been I've been in the, I was in that industry for a very long time, but it wasn't until I had a nerve thing come up in 2012, maybe kind of like your back thing that sort of altered my life. And it was a very extremely debilitating condition. They call it a suicide disease because it's extremely painful. And so it really, it altered my life for four years. And when I came out of that, it was kind of like, you know, I'm going to the doctors, nothing's working. So I went out on my own and started finding holistic doctors and researching. And I ended up getting, being able to get off all my medicine and put that into remission. And I'm completely pain free for the most part from it, that's but awesome. it changed the way I looked at things. And when I came out of that, then I started, that's when I went in and actually got life coach certified and started looking at things because I was trying to figure out why was I still unhappy and why was I having success and not maintaining? Like there was all these things that were going off in my head and I needed to put the pieces together. And so I started becoming basically a student of learning and started really doing the research. And, you know, there wasn't what this one day that I woke up and I said, oh my gosh, everything's different in the view of my eyes. It was this progression, right? This progression. And so here we are, you know, 2023 and the people that meet me now think this is the way I've been. I'm like, uh, no, <laughs> no, I didn't grow <laughs> right. up in a house where we were optimist. I didn't grow up in a house where people were encouraging us to do things, you know, qu quite the opposite growing up. And, you know, I had to really be like you and say, I need things to be different in my life. And I'm going to have to go do that work. But it, it is such a, when you do the work, it's so worth it. It's like anything you get out what you put in, you know, and that's, that's really my mission. You know, when I was fortunate to get to a spot where I don't really have to do anything, you know, and now I work more than I've ever worked before because it's, it's a passion project on both sides of the equations. Cause I watch people go through the waves method and I watch that light bulb go off 
and you you see that shift in their business. And typically, my clients are entrepreneurs that are a few years in, and they say, "What did I do? Like this isn't what I imagined." You know, they're they're not working on their business; they're working in their business, or vice versa. And I get to see it on the other side when we donate all the money and we get to send these kids abroad. So it's it's just this. I, you get it from both ends. And until you're on that giving end of it, you know, it's that silly, it's better to give a present than receive a present. But it's it's exactly true, right? Like you get the chills every day watching people have these transformations. And especially with the kids, yeah. like it's just, you know, I couldn't be happier to be doing what I'm doing. Yeah, no, I agree with you on that's so awesome. So traveling, this is a big thing for you. You've been all over the place. So when did this start for you? Like tell us a little bit about how this sort of evolved for you. Yeah. So, you know, we partnered with EF Tours, if you're familiar with EF. So they, $7 billion yeah. dollar company, you know, worldwide, they, and think middle school kids who go on trips to Europe and they do gap year stuff. They do other stuff as well. But uh, when I was 13, 12, 13, my mom sent me on a trip with EF to Europe and we didn't grow up with any money. And I like to say that I was in the, the room with the rich kids and that's not meant to be derogatory at all. It's just these kids were probably going to go to Europe someday anyway, you know? So I was kind of the outcast in that group and mom spent money she didn't have to send me on that trip. And it, that is what completely changed my worldview from there is no them. There's only us, you know, you see the disparity of a five-star hotel and the poverty that is right outside and not to get off topic, but if, if you look at our history, you know, it's the history of who we're taught to hate at any given time. You can just pick that out through history. Now we're going to hate the English. Now we're going to hate the French. Now we're going to hate the Russians. Now we're going and if you ask a group of people to raise their hand, if they know any of these people, nobody knows any of these people. It's just who you're taught to hate. And I envision a world where could you imagine if everyone, when they were a senior in high school and they graduate, they're forced to spend a year abroad volunteering mm -hmm. every worldwide. They have to go to another culture and volunteer for a year. Nobody would hate anybody. You just understand we're all the same. We all want the same stuff. So that was my worldview shift when I was 13. I was able to go on that trip. And that's why ultimately we partnered with EF for the foundation. So send a student leader abroad. Basically, a deserving kid can apply and it's a matching grant. And then we work with them and you'll love this. We work with them to raise the money. So mowing grass, delivering newspapers, selling candy bars, whatever it is. But we meet with them every week. And ultimately, if they if they only make five bucks, we're going to spend the rest of the money to send them on the trip. Yeah. But it's yeah. it's in them understanding that there's a stranger out there that cares about me. And they bring that back to their community. And then they go have this experience abroad and they bring that back to their community. And typically a community that they're not talking about that. You know, so the impact that that multi multiplies, you know, it's exponential over time. And uh, that, that's why we designed this whole thing the way that we did, because it, it certainly inspired the love of travel for me. And like I said, I've been to 50 countries, you know, by the end of this year, it'll be 55. And next year, COVID messed up Antarctica for me. So I was going to get my seventh continent by the time I was 40, which was a huge goal. <laughs> and uh, didn't get to go. So hopefully this time next year, I'll be doing Antarctica. I'll have my seventh continent. But um, there's just nothing, there's nothing like travel to change the way you view the world. There's nothing like it. Yeah. It's interesting that you bring that up too, because my oldest went on something that was probably kind of something like that. It was like an ambassador program. So when she was going from elementary to middle, and it was like a group, a group of parents that volunteered to go and they took a bunch of kids and, and she ended up going to Australia and so they did, basically they traveled, they went to like an, an Australian school to see how the kids go about their day. And it was a really neat thing, you know, for her to be able to have that experience. And I agree with you. I think that so much of, you know, like not to get off topic about that, but the reason we do that is because we don't know what we don't know. Right. Like, it's funny because I feel like, like I have a client right now that I work with that lives in Spain. I've been working with her since before COVID. December of 2020. And I've been working with her. And it's so funny when I listen to these people talk because I work with other people in different places and I listen to them and they have some of the same similar values that we have, some of the same ways they operate their business, right? They have different pr things that they have to navigate through. Like, you know, and, and she's living in Spain. They don't have networking like they have in Dallas. I mean, we have networking every night of the week, pretty much in Dallas, right? But okay. they don't have that, but they still have the same drive to work hard, the same drive to build their businesses, the same drive for their, you know, for the passion for their families and all of this. Right. And we think of them as being different, you know, and they're really not, they're, they're really not different 
than us. And so I love that you're kind of embracing that idea of this with these youth. And, and I'm like with you, I think, yeah, if, if, if every child, every student coming out had an opportunity to do that, it would be a, it would be different, right? They would have to be forced to get out of this space that we're in and see something different and make them even aware of what's going on around them. Right. It's good. I mean, how many people never, never leave 50 miles from their hometown? Like it's a staggering oh, percentage a of people. You know? a lot. Yeah. Yeah. There was a gal that came on here. I always have the, I remember all my guests. That's why I tell you all this. Like I, I remember bits and pieces of all my people, but had a girl come on here. She was the, the one of the stars on the show Castle for eight years. So I, I'm drawing a blank on her name, but the episode's out there. She was a star on there. Anyway, she arranges travel in these other countries. She's like the person that finds the people and then she creates their entire travel. And that was one of the things we had talked about was why so much of, you know, in our culture, we're so like in other, in other countries, like to give you an example, my girl in Spain, like she's leaving at the end, I think the 20th of August. And she's trying to decide, do I want to go to India or Europe? She's from Russia living in Spain. She goes to, I mean, they go to, they just hop on the planes and they just go And here. We have to, it's a big thing. We have to think about it, right? Like we got to plan it, think about it. And one yeah. of the things she said is that it is harder because it is a little bit more distance to be able to do that. You know, they, they a lot of those countries are really close. They can, but I think it's also our, the way we, our culture, the way we are taught to be, you know, we're proud of our country, which is great, but we're also sometimes not willing to always learn other things. And I think that's where people like you and I can have the opportunity to say, Hey, it's great to learn other things and be kind of worldly because that's how you understand people, right? Is when you get to know other people. Absolutely. No, nothing will teach you compassion and empathy. Like put just putting yourself in those positions, not necessarily people that might be on, you know, un, underprivileged. It's not that, but right. it's, you don't speak right. the language. You need help. You need to figure out where you're going. You know, there, there's, what's the quote? Like you wouldn't make fun of somebody with an accent if you could speak two languages too. It's like, mm -hmm. they're speaking your language. Of course, you can't speak Spanish. You can't speak Russian, You can't, but you're making fun of them because right. they have an accent. You know, it's right. like, okay. You know, it just, it gives you just a completely different worldview. You can't get another way. It doesn't matter how many travel shows you watch. You can't get it until, yeah. until you actually go to the place, you know? I, for one, like cool accents. I had a British guy on here the other. I've had a couple British. I love their accents. I have fun talking to all of them. So, and even my even yeah. my girl that I coach in Spain, she's from Russia. When I first started working with her, it was really it was kind of tough for me to understand her. We've been working together now. I got her figured out. Like I got it all now. We, I'm getting that whole <laughs> Russia. I got a couple friends here from Russia and Iran, and so I'm getting all these these different dialects figured out and, and accents and stuff. So it's good stuff. Yeah, good stuff. I love it. So you got this this project the book coming out you said in september is that what you said september 12th yeah okay awesome anything else on the horizon be behind this or just going to continue to continue the traveling doing your project your your nonprofit, and yeah there's so there's a lot that goes along with the book so the book comes out at yeah. the same time there's an accompanying journal that comes out and you kind of tackle it from okay. either way or do both and then there's courses that go along with it that will teach you the waves method they're all self-paced um, and then there's different levels of access to me and mastermind groups and accountability groups and everything that goes along with that. So just yeah. super excited about all that. And especially now that early test readers are coming back where they're not part of my circle, they're kind of strangers, you know, and you're getting that feedback and it's just overwhelmingly positive. It's just it's a validation thing, right? Because you watch yeah. it work one on one. You don't know if it's going to work for somebody that's just brand new into your circle. So that's all fun. And then um, we've got our podcast will be coming out in January. Audiobook will be coming out in January. And um, EF is planning a bunch of speaking for me. So I'm super excited about that. Okay. Doing a 12 state speaking tour on behalf of EF. And then uh, they invited me to their global summit. So just just super exciting stuff. Like every day I just get up thrilled to be working. <laughs> you know, it's 18 hours goes by and you do it again the next day. It's just permanent vacation, you know? Yeah. Well, if you end up speaking in Dallas, you'll have to let me know so we can tread around up some people to 
come out and see what you got going on. I do want to ask you another question. I like to ask this every once in a while because you've said a lot of really good stuff in here. And I feel like we sort of, you know, the great thing about what we do on these shows, I feel like we all sort of kind of say the same thing, but it delivers a little, you know, it comes out a little bit differently. And sometimes, you know, somebody needs to hear that message from that particular person. That's kind of how I feel about this, you know, but I, I want to ask you kind of a personal question about you and just, and you, and you answered some of this, but what would you say has been maybe the biggest takeaway in all of this for you? Like maybe the biggest learning aside from the fact about the traveling and, and understanding other people, but maybe as it for you as a human being. The biggest learning throughout my life or in building this business? I think it would probably, you can, I, I'd say in your journey, it could be your life. It could, cause this is all part of it. You know, what your, your business is part of it. You know, I, I think the, the overwhelming thing is in, you don't recognize this as much until you start to put yourself out there in the public eye. And I'm sure you've experienced this, but I think overwhelmingly people are good. You know, and I think that's mm -hmm. not something that we're, you know, I don't know if it was Einstein said you're the biggest decision you'll make is if you live in a friendly or a hostile universe, you're like at a very young age, you're going to decide, are people out to get me? Are people trying to steal from me or, or are people willing to help? And that's another thing that I think travel teaches you. You know, and, and the, the younger you can learn that, the better off you are, because I think you're you're more willing to ask for help from those around you and those that have already been on that path. And that's what we do. Right. That's what you do as a coach. I mean, it's you know, we've already done a lot of these things and we see it from a different perspective and we're here to help. You know, it's certainly in my case, like we, I don't even make any money. Like we donated all to the foundation. You know, so it's it's literally just about change and about changing people's perspectives and in my niche anyway, for entrepreneurs that they may be considering going back to corporate, they may be thinking about scaling or not, or slowing it down and they don't know what to do. They just feel stuck. So being able to give them a system that you watch a thousand light bulbs go off at one time and it's, it's just mesmerizing to watch. But I think that's it, you know, just understanding that we, we really do live in a friendly universe overall. I would agree with you on that too. That, that is good. I don't know if I've had anybody to say that, but you know what? That is so to me too, because I think we, we are taught a lot of times to be of the mindset. I'm going to get you before you get me. And a lot of that is shaped, I, I think by our back, like our past experiences, right? Like things that we witnessed and seen via our home life, school, you know, TV, all the things we get sort of in that mindset of I'm going to get you before you get me. And so we on, most of the time think that people as a whole are bad. Right. And like you, I feel the same way. I feel like most of the people that I meet are really trying to do the right thing. They're not always good at it, but they're trying to do the right thing. And they're trying to live by what they think is the right way to live. Right. And so mm -hmm. thank you for sharing that. It's yeah. good. All right. So a fun question I want to ask you, and then I'm going to let you tell us where to find all your good stuff. I want to know what is like the coolest place you've traveled? Like what is the, I, you're probably got to, we've traveled everywhere. So like, can you maybe give us one or two that has been like the coolest place? Oh man. I mean, that's Machu Picchu was obviously really neat. Um, but I've, it's really hard to say, you know, like I hey, you've been everywhere. Oh my gosh. In Zimbabwe, like, uh, you know, being on safari and Wangi and watching lions come right past me. I mean, there's, there's so many, there's so many experiences. I'll, t I'll tell you my, my favorite place on earth is Thailand, you know, and it's mm. Costa Rica is a close second, but like, I feel like Costa Rica is kind of cliche now because everybody goes to Costa Rica. <laughs> so I need to be yeah. more wild, more exotic. Right. But um, yeah. Yeah, so so many great experiences in so many different places. Yeah. I feel like somebody else told me Thailand too. I feel like I've heard that like more than once. So yeah. must be a, must definitely be a place to check out. I will tell you this: like in the in the Thai people are so they call it the land of smiles. Like the Thai people are the most friendly, wonderful people, and it's incredibly cheap to travel and live there. And you know, we usually go for a month at a time. And um, but I'll tell you this, and I was having this conversation with somebody this morning. I've been around the world twice. Like I've been around the world all the way to the east. I've been around the world all the way to the west. And very much the way I've built this business and the way I've lived my life. You know, you heard me say with a big enough why, anyhow is possible, right? I don't leave with knowing what my path is going to be. I know I'm, I want to be back home going in this direction roughly 
two and a half months from now. And I'll plan the first two weeks and that's it. I have no idea where the next place is I'm going to go. I have nothing booked. I have no excursions. <laughs> I have nothing. And you, I just let the trip come to me. And very rarely do I miss out on opportunities of any kind. So yeah. it's just, a, you know, if you're really enjoying a place, you can stay, you know, and I think just, again, I couldn't have told you six months ago that you and I would be on this podcast and this is what I would be doing for my business. And I would have a book coming out of, of all these things. Just, it wasn't in the cards. I just knew I want to help people. How do I help the most people possible? I'm open. And that's it. Love it. Yeah. I love it. It's good stuff. It's good stuff. And that's, that's how it, it goes. I mean, you can't really know all the hows, right? You just know what you want to do, what your, what your passion is. And when you open the door to opportunity, I think it was like Jordan Peterson that talked about like, you know, I always say this, like when you get so laser focused that you only have this one path, you miss all the opportunities that can come in on the side. So I always say, well, you want to, you want to set those goals. You want to know what, you know, sometimes you want to know what you're doing, right? So you can get to meet a goal, but I also think you have to open be open to the things that can come in because sometimes things come in that may be a little better than where you're at right now, or they might lead you to something greater. So I'm all about leaving things open for opportunity, enjoying life. It's good stuff. I love what you're doing. So if our audience wants to get in touch with you, maybe they want to pick up this book when it comes out, follow you, see what you're up to, see where you're traveling. I don't know. Where do we want to send them? So super easy at million dollar flip flops on every channel. And there's a, if you go to million dollar flip flops.com slash BTD, there's a bunch of extra goodies for just your audience. And the access code is also BTD on that website. Perfect. Awesome. Okay. Well, great. This is cool. I'm going to go check it out now. I was on your site this morning. I was looking, I like all the, I like the, the layout of it. I was checking it out today to get some more information and see about this, this million dollar flip flops you got going on here. So good stuff. Well, I'm grateful that you came on here today. Thank you for sharing your story and um, you're doing exciting stuff. And uh, yeah, I love it. Thanks for making a difference. Cause I think that's what we get, you know, that's what we get to do. Absolutely. Thanks for having me on. It's been a lot of fun. Yeah. Awesome. All right. And of course, we do want to say to our audience, if you enjoy our show, go check us out on Apple. Give us a rating over there. Hit that subscribe button on YouTube so we can keep sharing all these incredible, amazing stories and talking about awesome people in the world. And with that, as I always say, in order to live the extraordinary, you must start. And every start begins with a decision. You guys take care. Be safe. Be kind to one another. We will see you next time.